of our you know real talks that are coming live and exclusive into the monarchy community from us to you with absolute legends now when i say legend uh, quite often we use that term loosely right and um i'm probably the worst for that because i say legends or the goat you know the greatest of all time but this time uh when i say legend i absolutely mean legend uh, onzm ruben wiki uh thank you for joining us how are you brother yeah i'm good also sick yes but um just before we start also i was just going to some what i've been learning so uh, ya uh, what an absolute legend also yeah. and well like you know like you said you wanted to put yourself out there you want to be vulnerable uh because when i think about identity no one is more patriotic than you in terms of this country you bleed black you also bleed blue uh in terms of Samoa and your maori heritage uh talk to us about why it's so important for you to you know to have that identity and start off with something like that because you know were you scared when you did that also so it's really really nerve-wracking uh in regards to get out of my comfort zone you know it's um the unknown for me to to not being passed down the the torch from my mum because she she wasn't taught but my grandmother she was the fluent Samoan. so um so i just wanted to acknowledge my Samoan side uh, being the oldest uh, grand grandchild on that side and also you know I'm, I'm, I'm proud of my Maori side too. So, mm. you know, we talk about identity, and um, you know, I'm a proud Kiwi, but I'm also Samoan Maori. So, uh, I always try and um, a- acknowledge that as much as I can. I love that, us because like I'm one of the proudest Kiwis out there, also, and I reckon that I haven't come across anyone as proud as you and what you continually do for this country. And mm. you know, when we put on that black jumper many moons ago, uh, man, you're so inspirational to be around and, and, and to play alongside. Uh, especially when we played for for the Kiwis, well, well why uh, why is New Zealand uh, so special to you, River Wiki? Well, so you know we like we all come from humble beginnings, right? Um, most of, most of my life, there's was only a solo parent, so it was just my mum. So you know we talk about survival. My mum, you know, was working two jobs back in the days, uh, trying to provide for three siblings, and and this is in, in South Auckland, and you know. We were like gypsies. Also, you were moving from yeah. place to place, and uh, then we found our our nest in, in Otara. So, I think it was just uh, um, just trying to give back to you know what Mum sacrificed for us and and what she did. You know, and like my grandmother coming from Samoa to you know to to give back to their family and as as you would too. You know, it's. It's just paying the forward also and then like you know getting the opportunity to do what i what you know what i did for so long um i always go back to those 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 beginnings mm. pay it forward is exactly what you've done you haven't stopped man from as known as as long as i've known you uh seeing you on the tv doing your thing aspirations of trying to be like you to playing alongside you to even being admired Oh, admiring what you do right now. Uh, for those at home who've been hiding under a rock, 55 tests, uh, <laughs> the, you know, the, the goat of New Zealand Rugby League, 311 NRL appearances, uh, a winner in 94, the grand final for the green machine, the real green, green machine. machine. And then we're going to talk about 2005 later because it was the most comprehensive victory against an Australian team uh, I've ever seen in my life. It was, it mm. was unbelievable. But first of all, let's talk about you. 48 years of age. I gave you a hug the other day when we saw you at a, an, an outing there for the community. Surely you're as hard as rock, man. Uh, <laughs> talk to me about uh, the importance of being in shape, man, because surely you're in shape. Oh, so, <laughs> so like rock on rock, absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, you know, we always, it's health and well-being, you know, it's for me, you know, training is, is my, my outlet. You know, I've been doing it since, like, day dot back in the days. You know, back in, back in South Auckland as a kid, man, we used to run, run outside, play bull rush, whatever, until – until it was time to come in so when you hear mum call you in at, at night time you come in right so mm. 
I'm still kind of doing that till till um, till this day, and it it just it just helps with coping with uh, everyday stress and um, everything in in general, you know, with business and study. Um, yeah, I just this has been a huge part of my life also, and it, and it's and just like you, man. It's just yeah. we just got this thing that in our head we need to go. If we have something like bad to eat, we need to go do something. We need yeah. to go train, yeah. you know, and like. I got a sweet tooth, and I know if I have ice cream, I'm I'm going for herpes or something, you know. So that's what I love about you. Forty eight years of age, you're studying, you're still getting better. You never stop getting better. You're always about self improvement, and mainly, largely because you want to be at the best you can be, so you can actually contribute in this community, which is amazing. So when I when I saw that you hurt your Achilles not so long ago, and knowing how important. Uh, this is part of your lifestyle. Yeah. Um, how hard's it been? Because and what have you done? Because I, I know right now with COVID, uh, for the business owners, it's been pretty hard. You're a business owner yourself. Uh, what do you do when you find yourself down like that? Because you you must have felt down. Tough injury. Also, uh, mate, I've never done my Achilles before, ever. Like playing footy, just just come out of nowhere and like playing masters and the date. You know, it was July the fourth at uh, Manirua against the Rewa playing. Play for Odahu and we did this big scrum move and freaking I don't know I don't know why I did a sidestep for I never, I never <laughs> sidestep <laughs> I never sidestep and then I just heard I just felt like someone ankle tapping but there was no one near me I was like no nah. but um after that like when that happened my my process went straight you know uh, what do I need to do go to the hospital get get the assessment bring the physio bring the doctors get straight onto this you know because every time i get injury i, I want to just get rid of it so but mm, this one was mm. uh, going to be a longer um journey so um within three days i had my cast on i was one legged burpees mate on so i i just had to keep my mind fresh and i knew there was going to be a process for this uh achilles it's, the, it's uh week 13 uh today yeah and um <laughs> i haven't stopped man yeah. i haven't stopped it, it just i just got hit hit with a little hurdle and uh for me to overcome that i just got to keep busy you know oh. and keep my mind fresh so it's I one it's one thing to not stop and keep going what's next what's next because that's a high performance mentality that we've got mm. but you know what else there's times when you get up and you think man i don't want to do what's next um I, yeah. I, i'm finding a little bit harder because especially for us now yeah. you don't have a game to get back to you don't have goals on the field to do stuff so so when you do find those times have they been hard and, and what have you been doing to to keep yourself up and i know santa your beautiful wife is a big part of of motivating us at times so when that happened bro there was uh, a period of two weeks you know santa had to go into um you know into that mode of just because we, we still had the gym going oh, and she was angry because she was, she was angry with me it was because i did that <laughs> playing she didn't want you playing hey <laughs> <laughs> yeah, masters and so like you know a silent treatment for a little while and um but i i couldn't do anything at the gym so i felt like helpless helpless you know so you know i couldn't do anything at home so for the first two weeks it was it was tough you know and um for me <laughs> i had to do something just to keep my mind uh, ticking so the studies you know has been good and but it, that two-week period after i did the injury was real tough um because you know she had to nurse me yeah you know because of the showers oh far out. Was, angry nurse too hey eh? oh, absolutely you know there's a there's a lot of go there's a lot going on in our house at the moment santa's mum you know she's um she has she has cancer oh. so we're going we're going through that as well and and the just trying to get that balance right and um, making sure she's comfortable and prolonged mm. as long as we can. So, so how, do you, how do you get that balance right at home then with so many um, sad things happening? I, I know we've got to be grateful and think about that type of stuff, but um, how, how do you stay up? You know, because like, you know, like when we look at you, you look like you're a superhero, superhuman, and, and you are to a lot of people on the field. Mm. But, you know, beneath the, those muscles, all oh, spa. Uh, no, tough. no, we we have tough times also internally, man, and we uh, we talk it out and make sure that we're both on the same page and making sure we get through these um, these humps, you know, with our, with work, you know, due to lockdown, with mum, the injury, and it, it, it gets tough, you know, solely. But uh, when the team is on the same page and communicating, we can get over these humps and then enjoy mm -hmm. our time together especially through the lockdown, which has been a blessing in disguise, actually. I love that. When you mentioned team, bro, 
I need to go back to uh, a team that wanted your services. I mean, you had a great career coming yeah. through. You were doing everything you needed to do from South Auckland, Junior Kiwis with uh, Tana Umanga and uh, Willie Poaching. And I, I knew of you a very long time ago. Uh, but when the Green Machine called for your services after winning the grand final just two years before, this boy from South Auckland, uh, how did that go down? And, and, and what were your thoughts, man? Far, yeah. So I've been a big, big fan of uh, Green Machine since 89 when they won that grand final. And I was just at an awe of the, the big number three. Ah, man. It's massive. So it was huge. And, like, my game my game changed, like, playing local, you know. I didn't have a broken arm, but got the old shin guard, wrapped it around my arm, <laughs> started doing those, you know. Meninga once, then the, the elbow. The Monty chopped the elbow once, you know. But – um. Fast forward, so and get the opportunity to um, go over there through the Pacific Cup. We had a '92, like I was playing for the Maoris, and then to get an opportunity to go over there and uh, for two years, you know, I wanted to, you know, do something special, you know, and um, and it was all up to me to do that. And like I, I took Santa over, took my brother over, just to start a new new life and. It was tough, Salia. You know, it was tough. The training was, I thought I was fit, but the training was pretty insane. And mm. I just kind of went into uh, survival mode. Eh? Mm. Um, Salia, before you even got on the plane to go over there, when the Green Machine is asking for your services, who just won this championship a, a few years before, you've got a player that you've admired for so long who uh, you just, you know, you want to be like, and plus every other legend that's in that team. Do you have a point of, Shit, am I up to this? Was there any self doubt? Yeah. Was there any fears of letting them down? I mean, what yeah. was that like before you signed and you went over there? So I had to, I had to talk to mum before I had, uh, before I signed because you know, I've always been with mum. You know, mum was mum and dad. So to mm. leave the nest, it was, it was tough, and I had to make sure I got the, um, the all clear. Uh, and that was nerve wracking too. That was, it was going to be my first time on a plane, um, going to serious or. No, I've never been in the plane, so wow. that was even freaky, even more. <laughs> <laughs> Turbulence, you know, everything like that. But um, and I, I just look, I just always go back to humble, you know, the, the roots, back to where it all began, and it just it flooded through my my process and my and my mind, and you know, I got two years to try and do something special here, and it may it may work or it may not. And if it doesn't work, then I'll go home and then go back to work and just play like local footy. Um, but it it worked out. It was, you know, I bit the bullet and just went for it. You know, I didn't say much when I was in, in Canberra. I just let my actions kind of speak speak for me. I just I just think about that. Like when I was growing up and I was getting excited about um, you know going into camp with people like Stacey Jones and yourself. Mm. But for a boy from South Auckland who had never been in the plane that's going over there, uh, passing the ball or getting a pass or being in and around a change room like that with like you know. Uh, some of the names like Nandruku and Daly and Stewart and Meninga and Clyde, like these are absolute legends of the game. And a lot of yeah. these guys in time will be immortals uh, um, amongst the men in there. I mean, do you, did you question yourself daily? Because right now I'm going through the second act. For me, it's it's in business. You're doing business as well. And at times I go, oh, am I good enough? Or what do yeah. I need to learn to be a part of it? Like, and, and, and that's it. You know, you were the big fish in a little pond in, in uh, New Zealand. But over there, it's changed for the people at home. Uh, what what can you give them in terms of advice to when you're in that situation? So there were so many, so many points in, in that two years. Like you know, self self doubt. Am I going to make it? I think. And when they were starting to, you know, the Australian mentality is they always want to win, right? Yeah. And uh, to be, I don't. It wasn't personal attacks, but it was just for me to get better, right? Yep. And I, sometimes I took it personal and I thought oh, they okay. were going to dig at me. So when Ricky Stewart, you know, I give Ricky Stewart a bad pass and he'll blow the shit up, you know, blow yep. me up, <laughs> you know. And if you know Ricky Stewart, it was loose. So I, I took it personal, and but then I had to like really think about it. This is not a personal attack. He wants to make me a better player. So mm. that that happened for the a couple of years before I even – Got the first grade man, and you know, Brett Mullins were getting into me, and I was like, I mean, I'm gonna punch you out soon, bro. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, their mentality is fight, fight, the survival mode. 
yeah, but, you know, I had to take it all on board so to make me a better player. And they were trying to get the most out of me to be the best I could be in that, yeah, in that yeah. little small window over two years. And, and I learned heaps, man. I learned so much. Um, sort of when you when you go back to that first year in particular, uh, when you quite you weren't part of uh, the main team as much as yeah. you were the following year, and it was hard because the training would have been harder than you've ever experienced. There's guys talking to you like you've never been spoken to before. Mm. There's that self doubt in there. What 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 kept you there? And what kept you coming back daily and not chucking it in? Because I know there's a lot of people that went over there. Mm. Uh, they tried it and then chucked it in like weeks, months later. There was. One piece of advice that Tim Sheens gave me um, throughout that uh, two-year period, bro, he told me to go find some friends outside the circle. So when I say uh, find some friends outside the circle, that means find some people that uh, are going to tell you straight how it is, you know, not like piss in your pocket, you know. Yeah, so yeah, I found some friends in, in Canberra, like heaps of Polynesian um, people that, we grew to like they grew to be family you know our family our extended family in in uh, canberra and so every game i never hung out with the boys man i always went um went home drank the car on the sunday and i kind of stayed away from that that limelight stuff i only saw the boys from monday to friday or so sorry saturday yeah yeah um so you don't want to be living in their pocket you know and you want to get some advice that um because we had some big wins so those some of those got longest bro yeah and, yeah yeah but, my boys would tell me what I did yeah. wrong in the game. Yeah, yeah, I know. Mm -hmm. I like that, man. i got friends for 30 years plus, and it makes a yeah. difference. Let's move forward a year. After all that hard work and staying on when people were telling you to do stuff and swearing at you, and at times where you thought I was going to get into the biff, mm -hmm. uh, you made a grand final. Uh, man, like when I go through this team, I think this is probably the greatest club side of all time. Yeah. Uh, Brett Mullins, Nagus, Meninga, Wikin, and Druku, Daly, Stewart. That's your backline, man. Uh, these some of these guys are going to be immortals. Pongia, Walters, Osborne, Cro Croker, uh, who I played against, Ferner and Bradley Clyde. Wow. Talk to me. A team of champions or a champion team? What made you guys so special? And, you know, I often forget that you won a bloody grand final. Amazing. <laughs> it's crazy. You know, we always talk about team of champion or champion of a champion team. You know, it's a champion team, man, because everyone was on the same page. You know, and they they bought their best game every day, man. It's like training was like playing. So there was a lot of, uh, you know, with Quinton and Johnny, I was the I was the human tackling bag, man. And what I learned the like the hard way of why why I do. I was gonna I was gonna I'm just gonna suck. I'm gonna put it here. I'm laughing because no one <laughs> likes training against you. Uh, and now I know why, because oh. of the way it was then. Yeah. Because uh, there's, there's never even a half pie. When we do yeah. post sessions, when we do uh, fitness or, or, or mainly the collision stuff and the sandpit at the Warriors or everything else, You're everyone on. goes away from yours. Everyone, because you just hurt people, because that's what you do. Mates or no mates, you just you just smash people. So this is where it came from. This is where it came from, Moose. And, and it, it still comes from where we grew up playing bull rush and stuff. It's, it's survival mode and like, Every training in Canberra or every training at the Warriors or, or New Zealand, it's always the same. It's you want my position, you gotta mm. take me up. And that's the that's the approach we have to come across. And like um and in ninety four, that's the way we trained. We lost one game that year. Sorry, two games. And and that that's the reason why. And you know, everyone was on the same page and we wanted to do something special with Mel because it was his last year and there was an injury also, uh, David Boyle got injured and um, that's when I got my opportunity, and I didn't want to give it to anybody else. Oh, you bloody took that, man! That's right, and oh, it, it, it's uh, it's amazing. So, from from that team, if you can go back and and just look about a couple of key things besides everyone being on the same page, or like it, it's a a team of champions that played like a champion team. Uh, what what made that team so cohesive and 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 major you know like function so well? Because there's a lot of egos in that team. Well, what I mean by egos is there's a lot of class players yeah yeah uh, when you say that also you know everyone had their part to play in, in in the team and they had to bring that every game you're right so we, we we didn't focus on the so for my position i had to focus on what i needed to do for the team okay so ricky Stewart had to do focus on his part and collectively when we do that it's going to be pretty um Pretty, pretty unbeatable right mm. so we, we we didn't like try try to focus on the 
a, a bigger game plan. We just can't hit the focus. Tim Sheen wanted us to focus on our part of what we needed to bring the team in, in attack and defense. So um, some games other than the night before games, if I was marking Steve Renolf, so, Ooh, what, so what am, yeah, so what am I going to do this to stop this for the team? You know, I, well, I'm going to come out of the line and going to take his head off <laughs> before he gets any pace up, right? And uh, like I so said, one, one, one attack, one defense. So just come up with two goals and share it with the team. Mm, uh, I love that. When you talk about teams, that was a great team, also. But and like you know, fifty-five tests was amazing. I want to go back to a particular day in your career, and there's been many great days in your career. Uh, Two thousand and five, uh, and I think it was that Loftus Road because you, you break yeah. the record for fifty yeah, tests. Yeah, sure. yeah, yeah. Leeds, the first day. Uh, I mean, you got man of the match. Uh, it was against Australia. The first time we beat Australia in the series since fifty-three, uh, and we beat them. I think it was twenty-five nil. Talk to me about that day because that whole camp. Like building up into that, no one ever suspected yeah. you were going to win that. Can we talk about that team and their environment? Because never seen Australia being a manhandled like that before. Well, the first off was like with that, we weren't booked to be in the final. So we had no accommodation. Wow. The final was going to be uh, Great England versus Australia. So we used that as fuel to, um, to inspire us to, mm. to get the win. So there was a lot of, you know, there was a lot of stages through that campaign uh, that we were building up to um, do something special. And when they when they told us we didn't have accommodation the week prior, suddenly, I, you know, I got real angry. Right? How and, did you find out that you didn't have accommodation? Was it was it Bluey who told you? Did you tell the rest yeah. of the team? So Bluey told me, and then he addressed the team, and then I brought the team together and said, "All right, this is our opportunity to." you know, shove this right in their face. We're going to do something that we've never done before, boys, like on a, on a regular, and we're going to make history. So, and everyone, everyone bought into it. And, mate, every every time an Australian ran, there was like three or four, four black black and white jerseys going into the tackle. You know, that, and that's and that's like going to war. You know, that's that's what the rifles, our shoulders were with our rifles, so they, mm. and we were just going in there hard. And, um I wasn't even worried about the testing. It was more like I was coming to that age, um, you know, I, I didn't know if I was going to be on another tour. So I just wanted to give it all, you know, and and do something special for uh, for the for the boys and for our country and, and for our, you know, because we're only the caretakers, right, us, and, you know, like, mm. we've got to respect the ones who have become before us. So that's – and that's why I got a real emotional after that kind of longer. And um, he said, this is for all the ones that come before us. You, you say you're only a caretaker, and, and yes, I get it, we are, but you're you're the goat of New Zealand rugby legals. And not only just that, because I remember back in 96 as a young junior Kiwi who was playing every curtain raiser before the Kiwis match, and not every Kiwi would talk to me, uh, but there was <laughs> one Kiwi that would talk to me, and, and that was the Kiwi that I cared the most about, and, and, and that was you. You were like that for a lot of people. You've been like that through... Uh, your whole career, you can always pass back every opportunity yet, whether that be with players, with fans, everything else. What, what, what is it about you uh, that you're built that way to uh, make you do that? And what do you get out of it through these relationships? Oh, sorry, man. Your mum, mum always told me, you know, every one piece of advice she gave me: treat people as you know, the way you want to be treated back. And and I've I've lived by that. And you know, I've made a lot of friendships and. Uh, or like a forever, and that's through rugby league and and er everything else um, outside of that. And you know, it's you know, we only get one shot at life, and I don't think I have any enemies out there. So <laughs> that's um, I just want to, I just want to, you know, I just want to give back as much as I can as like you know what Mum did back. Yeah, no, I love it also. She'll be proud of you. So many people are proud of you, whether they're related or they've had the opportunity to meet you or not. Just, just on that note, when you really want to be able to give back, uh, are there any other sort of non-negotiables or things that are important in your life, uh, like favorite quotes or or any sort of tools that you use to be the killer you are, man? Like, you know, you debut in 93, you're still going through to 2008, and now you've still uh, got the body of a 25-year-old, probably better than most 25-year-olds. <laughs> Times two, so that's 50. <laughs> <laughs> but, um, I always I always kind of, yeah, I always kind of stay with that, that quote. Their mum kind of 
instilled in my head. I, I kind of kept it simple, but um, deep down, it's just I always want to get better every day, you know, mm. always because you just never know. It, you know, I, I could pass away tomorrow. So, but I just want to leave a legacy behind that. You know, this guy was not, you know, was a good bloke and gave so much back to his people. And um, I'm trying, I'm trying to win every day. Also, with my my bubble with my wife, who who's been the stalwart of this yeah. relationship and the reason why I am what I am today. And you know, she kept she kept it real. She kept it, you know, straight. Jamie would have done the same sort of. And mm. if they don't, they don't do that. And they're just, you know, one of those wives is just in there for the glamour. Yeah. yeah my wife's no. straight up. Oh, know. yeah, she's straight up. <laughs> she scares more, me more than most people. But, you know, <laughs> but that's because I stay on the right side of her that I'm fine. <laughs> Amen. Uh, you, you've got that way. Like, we, we've, we've touched on a couple of wonderful memories that you've had. Um, and no doubt you've you've taught a lot of people. But in terms of the game for you, I just want to, if there's one or two memories or even lessons that you've learned from the, this great game that you've given so much to and you still do today, uh, which you could share would, would be amazing. I think um, I think my first first game with the Kiwis solo was in Papua New Guinea. So that was an eye-opener for me to, under Frank in the court, go to Papua New Guinea, never been there before, and the the passion that that country holds for rugby league. And yeah, man. I think, man... They just saw Ruben Wiki Canberra Raiders, you know. They're big fans of Canberra Raiders. Mal Manning is a big store oh, over yeah, there in, 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 um, in Papua New Guinea. And um, it was a wake-up call. Because so one, one of the tests, we were winning by like 20-plus points and it was coming up to half time. Tear gas was thrown onto the field. And, like, that's... That would freak that freak the shit out of mm, all of us, mm. you know. We had to hit the ground, take it into the change rooms, uh, because the the crowd was getting hostile. So this, you know, that that experience in '94 was the, the Kiwis, bro, is, is one I'll remember because you know they had the the dogs, they let the dogs loose on the the fans, the, like chewing <laughs> chewing them, like the supporters. I was like, fuck, <laughs> get me back to the hotel, mate. <laughs> You know, it, it was yeah, it was chaos, but yeah, we were stuck in um, in the hotel all that time because we weren't, weren't allowed out. So that's a vivid memory to '94 to actually to 2006. My last my last L teams with the Kiwis um, when I retired, I, and um, Stephen McGuire asked me the question after the after the, the game. Yeah, I forgot to tell my wife I was going to retire, right? <laughs> <laughs> so she didn't know. She heard it on the news, you know, and I was like, wow, well, yeah. yeah, but it just felt, just felt right, you know. And mm. I think it's, I think it's time to go, um, and just focus on, uh, focus on the Warriors for the next couple of years. So yeah. those two, those two moments from the start to the beginning, they kind of stand stand out for me and the journey I've been through also. But um, and, and I've met some some great people along the way, which, you know, I can call my family, like yourself in 96, Logues. Um, man, just never any brother. Mm, no, well, you're a man that's held in high regards all around the world globally. The, the, the English, wherever you are, um, they think of you highly. Uh, not mm. only is that intimidator, that enforcer on the field, uh, but also that, that guy that um, was so compassionate and so loving off the field. That cracked me up, man. Also, I remember back we were playing Melbourne on the bus and we were just looking, we were playing, um, uh, what's his name? Uh, Brett. Uh, what's his name? Brett White. Brett White was the player oh, yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. for, for Melbourne. And I just read in his uh, bio and he got highlighted for the for that week, particular week. And uh, who would you, who, who's your most feared opponent? Who would you not like to, um, you know, uh, upset? And uh, it was Ruben Wiki, and actually that actual particular night, and I've never seen you fire up. You don't fire up on the it's field, like, like you fire up when when you put a shot on. But legally, yeah. but he he came after Webby and he was going to yeah. do something illegally. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. And then you came around the corner, and I saw your eye contact with his eye contact, and you, man, you look scary myself. <laughs> Surely he dropped it, man. Do, do you remember that you, night? You protect your family, right? So <laughs> like, it's, it's, it's like when you cross the line. We're here for business, right? But off the, off, you know, come off the field, then 
No, I'm better than a teddy bear guy. Yeah. <laughs> uh, <of> <laughs> I remember Mate. that. <laughs> oh, I, I, I just cracked up because I remember that reading that beforehand and then teasing him afterwards and in the actual moment because that's what I do. Okay, let's talk. <laughs> I mean, we could talk about your career for hours, bro. Amazing career. Congratulations on a, on a wicked career. I was so privileged to play against you, play alongside you, and experience what a, what a leader you are. Um, that, that quick transition from Warriors trainer. Wonderful, but now into your second act in business uh, as, as a gym owner. Uh, what's that been like, and how have you, you know, you transitioned that tools of high performance uh, over uh, to the world of business? Yeah, that that was a tough transition. I think my around my mentality wise to from the high perform, performance level to um, the normal average Joe and Janes of our community. So not trying to be that that trainer that said, hey move your mulling, you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I can't I can't approach it that way. And Santa pulled me in line and said, you can't train them like that. It's you gotta you gotta pull it back and regress the movements because they're not high performance. You know, they they just they just want to be active, you know. Yeah. So I had to get my mindset around that. And plus taking that uh, taking that step into a business, Santa's been wanting to do this, you know, leap into the unknown for a long time and she's very business orientated and you know, she's in her last year a degree, and I think it was more. I need to take this. I need to take this leap with her, and get uncomfortable again. And nice. and we did that. And uh, the previous owners to where we are now it used to be a CrossFit gym, and we worked out something, and we took over the the lease, and it was right in the heart of Otara. Uh, with the helicopters flying over the top. <laughs> when you hear helicopters and autos, you got to stay indoors now. Yeah. But um, but just with all the constraints around that area, we wanted to do something special for our community, you know, and we created WikiWorks Fitness. Mm. And it's like, it's just come full circle. So like, we're from Otara. Love it also. And it's... It was just a calling, man, and I think the timing of it was perfect. You know, at a, a mature age now, and you know, um, we just wanted to, yeah, we wanted to yeah. do something special. And, and you know, there's been some hurdles, you know, with the lockdowns, um, not paying our rent, and but we, so our owners live right next door, and they've been really awesome with us, you know, with regards to the lease payments and and just kind of helping us through the process because they mm. they know it's needed in um, South Auckland. Absolutely. You know, and we're not we're nothing flash, but we we got a lot of heart. You know, our yeah. our gym's all about heart and giving back to our people. So we wanna um you know, our one of our um mottos is no one gets left behind. And you know, every time when everyone's training and someone's still going, everyone just keeps just jumps mm -hmm. in and just waits, mm -hmm. you know, they will finish and and that's something special for Santa and I that we've kind of created over the since our two thousand eight to present day. Um, and that's what we want to leave behind for for our community. And mm. we're, we're still learning the business also, and that's why with Manaki, I can get some good little tips and yeah, so absolutely uh, awesome. you know, just, how we can help us out. Absolutely. Just just on that, like when you say wiki, um, it's always heart. That's all we see, heart, yeah. high performance, intent. And I just want to – Intimidation, wanna, there, right? Oh, uh, yeah, well, I'm just glad you're on my side also. We used to intimidate <laughs> a few other people. We used to go to work in that defensive line. Uh, but I just want to commend you on a wonderful career. Uh, so much admiration for what you do on the field, what you're doing off the field now and supporting. We've got Biola Kalala there talking about uh, how proud he is of you, uh, quite confident. There's a lot of people that are, are very proud of you uh, from, from what you've done. But before you go, I just want to two things. Uh, first of all, uh, for people that want to get into startups, uh, like in business, you know, what what do you give them um, bits of advice or just to get in there or whatever? And then also if someone wants to be a professional athlete or high performance, want to chase that, uh, bits of advice for that startup in business, do they just go full out or, um, or even professional? So I think uh, just with the business side of things, uh, you're going to have to get the right um, information. So I think with this platform you have now also, it's best for them to seek some good advice of some some good people and like and their knowledge mm -hmm. and i think for us we did that we found a marketing team that uh, help us promote our, our wikiworks fitness you know so we had a website we just started merchandise so it's small things we've worked over the last 11 years silly and now we've got our own 
What was it? Do, no. the, do the muscles come with that? <laughs> <laughs> Can I buy the muscles? Shirts on, the shirts on, shirts on. No. Oh, but, wow. But, but you got to find help. In, you know, it's not, it's not going to be easy, but seek out the right um, support and, like, you know, with your networks and so forth going forward. And with the high performance side of things, man, if you really want really want something, you got to get it, man. I don't, I don't care where you come from. You know, you can break all barriers and um, mix with the best. Mm, mm. Uh, pet lover, light worker, loves your merch. Uh, can I buy the muscles? Yeah, I was, I was, I was <laughs> wanting to buy the muscles myself. He's all too, from Carver, man. That's all from Carver Lifting. That's all. Uh, yeah, the Carver King, Ruben Wiki, Legend, Goat, um, ONZM, Solio, thank you so much for your time. But just on that point, too, in there, um, that's what our community is all about, man. Just jump in there, talk to people, ask each other mm. if you need some support, ask a question. It's going to be good. We're actually starting up a group that you're going to be a part of uh, very it's soon in that group, which will be ideal. So I'll let you go. So I know you're a busy man. And uh, uh, thank you very much for your call and all, man. Pleasure, also, man. Love you, bro. The man, Ruben Wiki. Um, what a what a treat! Uh, that's our second um, uh, live real talk coming into the group, which is exclusive for us. And you know, uh, we've got Ruben Wiki uh, in terms of the high performance with intent, with a lot of love. Um, you know, and uh, like you said, the Manaki community is here for everyone to get ahead, to learn, to understand, to get better. So just reach out, message someone today, uh, someone uh, for advice, for help, or maybe you can help someone else. And I think that would be good. So. Monday, Wednesday, Fridays, each day, different times. going to be a little bit random. We're going to have great guests coming in here live and exclusive where you can ask your questions. Uh, and I think on Wednesday, it's going to be Michaela Blyde, who's a gold medalist from the New Zealand Sevens team over there in Tokyo, and it's going to be 1 p.m. So join in from me, Monte Beatham, and the Monarchy team. Um, have a good day.